Hello everybody, I'm Dr. Jesse Jackson III. I am the best-selling author and facilitator of the Don't Kick Em Out book and training series, uh, which has had the outstanding privilege of being read by thousands of readers around the nation, and thousands of folks have actually uh, attended the training, which we're extremely proud of that. What we want to do is, uh, in this brief training, is answer some of the basic uh, questions that people have about don't kick them out and, and things that would help them better understand how to use the program and how it creates value for you and your individual school. Now, first question we typically get is why do we need uh, the don't kick them out book and training? Well, the brutal fact is, is that soon as we start this process of no child left behind, it started an issue where the government now began to evaluate all the facets of the school and one of those facets was school suspension and how often the youth uh, were referred for special education. I started to say in the mid uh, 2000s, the early 2000s, around 2006, 2007, that you would have to stop kicking kids out because you know, at that time I was working in the, in the juvenile facilities and the prison facilities, and the research was beginning to start what, uh, deeply within the government of what created the, the prison pipeline. How did young people start funneling into the system? At the top of every list, it was school suspensions. Top of every list, it was right there. So now, it, now we see fast forward to 2015 and 2016, we see the government, the White House, now starting to say things like rethink discipline. Now you see in a few years ago where in many states that where schools, districts got suspend, uh, excuse me, got fined uh, large amounts, I mean as high as a million dollars for high levels of disproportionate suspensions. So what it began to say to us is that we needed to start safely teaching folks exactly what's is creating this negative behavior and then to understand how to differentiate in what kind of behavior we're seeing. Now let's let me show you what I mean when I say that. One, if you need don't kick them out and it's one. If you're a title one district, I can tell you with full assurity, irregardless of what you think you're doing, what you think is working, you would have to have at least hear, read and understand what don't kick them out is saying. You, you would have no choice. Why? In the consistent pattern of all the districts we work with all over the country, there's been one consistent thing. And it's always poverty. What I was able to successfully uh, present in my argument was that we are not having a race dialogue. We're not having a racial fight. We are having a conflict of class between working class people and impoverished humans, which are our students. Title I, when it started 50 years ago, uh, was aimed at helping a, a population. Well, teachers are working class Americans and you're putting two class systems together and they are absolutely butting heads. The brutal reality of welfare is that welfare, when it's ingrained in a human, brings a devalue on education. Why? Because the kid's going to get fed irregardless of whether they do what they're supposed to do or not. So entitlement mentality now has conflicted with ed the, the education process. No way around that. And that's consistent all over the world, whether you're working with uh, in poor income areas, in rural areas, urban cities, with black kids, white kids, Chaldean kids, Indian kids, it's consistent across the board. The second piece of it is, Don't Kick Them Out was designed to show you how to differentiate in behaviors. So what do we see? What are we saying? Don't kick kids out? No, that's goofy. What we're saying is, know the difference in patterns of behavior. Now you have to realize, I worked with the behavior issues in jail. We lock people up for certain behavior, behavior patterns. It's what I do, it's what I study, it's what my practice is every single day of my life. That's what I do, working with youth who have destructive, dangerous, and criminal patterns. And what we were able to find was the common behavior referrals are profanity, willful defiance. Okay, Profanity and willful defiance, for lack of a better term, is just really anal, antisocial personality, and it, it depends on if you had a person who knew how to kind of work with uh, anal retentive personalities and ask some questions and kind of deal with a kid who's a jerk. There's no other way around that, right? 
So dealing with a kid who has a jerk mindset, who's rude, disrespectful, and defensive. That's one, that's one thing because that's not an automatic suspension. That, that opens up some dialogue. When a kid's using profanity, it opens up some dialogue. Why are you talking to me like that? Why are you using language like that? What's going on with you today? Now, I've seen this. I was with a principal at one of our schools last week had the identical experience where kids effing off and being rude and being offensive, you know, being a jerk, uh, offending everyone. And we're like, hey, man, this guy's got to get out of here. We got to get this guy out of here. He's out of control. He's not respecting the environment. But as we just asked two additional questions before we sent him home, now we got the kids sitting there in the chair bawling, crying out of control because we asked a simple question. Have you talked to your father? So what we found was this guy has internal damage, which he uses profanity and willfully define the environment by an unresolved trauma he has in another phase of his life that he's brought to the school. Now, are we saying that those kids don't have to be suspended or removed? No, we're not. What we're saying is sometimes we can ask the question and maybe get to the bottom of it and change the outcome and pattern. That's what don't kick them out is. Do the step down, check down first, before you execute judgment. Now, where the, the problem is here is with things, we have school districts that have people who think they know what they're doing, so now they keep that same mentality when it comes to doing with, dealing with things like fighting. Now, if you ever, if you read Don't Kick Them Out, very simply, we were clear. We have no tolerance for fighting, no tolerance for bullying. Those are behaviors that we have identified as criminal conduct patterns. Those are ones where you're physically assaulting, threatening, we can't work with you. Now we have to do another level of intervention. Now, and see, what we see is in most districts, they lump all those things together. So we got the bullier, the fighter, they're all being given the same uh, level of penalty, a few day suspension here in a conference. That's not going to work. When you have fighting, you have to stop your program, and now we have to look at another level of intervention we're going to do because you can absolutely never put your hands on anybody in this country. It is unacceptable, and it's something that I don't tolerate, and it's something that I know is a terminable offense. It is an offense that causes us to physically stop you, and that's where things like detention and, 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 and lockup come in. Now, I will not jeopardize anyone's safety to prove a point. Okay, there must be clarity on how we deal with these issues. Without that clarity, it can be extremely dangerous and people can get hurt. It's not just randomly keep kids in school. And this is why so many principals, as soon as they hear that, well, they've been hearing it from their boss, so they automatically get offended. Well, I'm trying hard to keep kids in school, X, Y, and Z. You got some people getting sued because they got a, a gotta go list. I have no issues with that if you do your diligence and your check down okay it's a way this has to be done and if you do it right you'll be okay and that's what don't kick them out it just do follow the check down follow the process and that protects the students and the environment from certain behaviors you protect yourself from being uh creating legality and doing things the wrong way second question is why do so many schools struggle with behavior issues? Very simply, this comes right here. Boom, this list right here. History of failed initiative. They try, they're trying things, they don't know what they're doing. Doesn't work. Disconnection between school and district administration. And it's just like in politics where we have people who don't live regular civilian lives making laws for people who live in society. We have, we have school administration that hasn't been around kid, kids in decades making policies for what we should do with kids, okay? It, it's just, it's egregious and it creates a consistent problem. And that, that disconnect, when administration is disconnected from what's going on in the building, when administrators don't go out to the building, aren't in the schools, don't know what's going on, you're gonna consistently struggle with behavior policies. You know, you have competing initiatives. So what we see is many districts are trying to do too many things. And those things drain the cash and you can't 
lay a foundation in your district and it's an ongoing struggle. Continuous changes in district leadership, so the super, a new superintendent's in and out, new principals in and out, people just constantly go. And so when you get new people, you get new priorities. You get a, the old principal, he was on board with the discipline and supported the teachers. You get a new guy, he's trying to figure it out. So now there's trust issues the first year of the program and now the program goes in the toilet. Fifth thing is cultural differences between our students. That's the first thing, and our, our staff, that's the first thing we highlighted. Middle class, working class, impoverished, conflict of values, inadequate preparation of teachers. Our training is an absolute joke. Uh, we're giving out, now think this through. If, if giving out handouts with our students doesn't work, why would we go and do that same program with our teachers, giving the handouts? Our professional development days are absolute jokes. They're not inspiring people to do better. They're not gaining wisdom and opening folks up to understand better ways to do things. It's laughable. And as a result, teachers are ill-prepared. So basically, when teachers have a negative experience, they go to another district. And then the most important thing is there's a failure to address the real issues, the, the, the real issues that our students and staff have. We're not addressing the real issues. They're unresolved traumas meaning our students that are coming from these backgrounds are extremely damaged and they are not getting addressed. Now, it's not the teacher's job to be a therapist to the student. Their job is to teach their core subject. That's what they get paid to do. What we're asking teachers to do is to be aware enough to identify certain things so they can make the referral. Now, what we found is a lot of districts are ill-equipped to manage the issues and needs of the students. That is the deficiency. So we have seen in certain issues where where districts don't have a social development process, a program. So think this through. We're not talking about putting psychologists in there to talk to youth because that also that's another layer. That's a systematic approach to it. Bringing in uh, uh, psychologists and social workers that might help. But what we're starting to see is having people who come from a behavioral support background, who work with youth on a day-to-day -day basis, get in and mix it up with the kid. Not so much medication, not so much uh, putting services on the kid. It's a different layer of people, the dean of students or behavior support person that we're lacking in our schools. It is a, it's a basically a step down from the classroom that is a relationship layer that's missing. And it has to be clinical orientated people who have been trained in how to do it because it can't just be mentoring. It just can't be things that uh, it has to be professional, clinically guided because the issues that we're facing with suicide and depression are exactly that. They have to have skilled folks. So that might be some social workers. It might be some psychologists. But if they have to be trained in a different way to approach. How does the Don't Kick Them Out book and training system work? Very simply. What makes it effective is it, it operates just like this, multiple training sessions, okay? When we say this, we're identifying the fact that we're teaching human beings a new skill about one, understanding other humans, increasing their awareness to the issues of other humans, and here's our advantage, increasing your awareness to what's going on with you. It is a process where we are literally encouraging and engaging staff to better understand human issues. So it takes time. So the way we've seen it be effective and really 98% of every school we work with always does a follow up because it's required. We have some districts that work with it and do it on a monthly basis. We have some programs that do it on a bi-monthly basis. We have some that do it quarterly. We have some also you can see here to take advantage of the summer boot camp where you can do two to three days in a row. You can get large groups together and three days really works best when you're doing it district wide and you bring hundreds of people together because it it's something. Time is required. You have to be able to ask your questions. You have to be able to intervene, you know, intervention, working together, uh, challenge things you hear, ask for clarity, bring your experiences and be able to gain clarity in that realm and it works and we also engage in heavy amounts of reading material 
what I've done over the course of my 24 year career is I've continued to document the things I have seen, the things I know in working with students who are going to prison, who have shot and killed people, who have brought guns to school, who have been frequent, consistent behavior problems, and then working with the teachers who have worked with these kids and the things we've seen, the things that we know work and the things that we know are productive that students and teach one students and teachers and parents need to really understand and then we use our training approach to we use our training to bring personal awareness what we found is that we tried to help people on a personal level first because that impacts our professional conduct we gone are the days of we're trying to approach things from a just a purely professional perspective first teaching is a human sport we work with this is a people business these are people problems so we have to address it personally we use our training sessions as personal awareness the more aware folks get the better results you get whenever you hear about my trainings they're always something that woke people up that touched the core with them on the inside that's the only way to address this there's no systematic uh, way of dealing with it outside of systematically changing a human heart and a human mind and that's what we do that's been our advantage because it touches the core of how we what we believe and what we think and that's what been successful for us this is why don't kick him out has been so valuable to thousands of educators around the nation and to schools and to districts that really needed a new way of approaching behavior you can come up with a behavior system positive behavior supports put a lot of handouts in place do a lot of trainings about what we think we should be doing there's very few systems where people actually work with that difficult student who curses folks out you know call you every name and things like that what we found is two things. One, you can get ahead of that kind of behavior by identifying certain things in the kid. Know that, hey, this kid could be a problem for me. Let me approach it this way. And then the second part is, is once it has gotten to that point where the kid is having meltdowns, you got to know what to do under pressure with it. I do know that certain situations we can't manage. We have to remove from the school. Why? Because we can't manage it. And once again, teachers are not therapists. We want teachers to be have awareness to what's going on with the kid because what it can do is it can prevent a, a, a more escalated dangerous issue in the future. So we will want to deal with this issue while we can control it versus when it's gotten out of control and we missed it. And that is what Don't Kick Them Out is all about. If you know your school will benefit from training and starting the process because it is a process. This is not something that you're going to think, okay, we're going to hear this and let's see if this works out. No, it works out. It's are you committed to following through? Now, notice this. I'm going to leave you here with this. What makes it not work is that the leadership changes in the district and the leadership doesn't follow the process through. When we've seen success with what we're doing, it's that the, the management and leadership of the district are consistent across the board. The superintendent, the principal is going to be there and they follow the course all the way through. When we have a disengaged superintendent, a disengaged principal that thinks like, oh, okay, it's all right, no big deal, or you know, maybe it'll work out, maybe it won't, I can guarantee you, you're gonna have an ongoing process of failure. And that is something we won't engage in. So this is why with our trainings, we interview the people who want us to come. Now notice this, we interview them because if they're not gonna stay committed to it, it will end in frustration for the staff. The staff will be disappointed. And I remember working with one staff consistently saying, are you gonna come back? Are you gonna come back? Because they said, we start initiatives, but we don't finish them. And that was the staff saying to me, make sure you stay engaged with management because management here tends to start new initiatives, forget why, because they're not with the kid every day. My business is all about being with the kid, the difficult, challenging kid, and encouraging dynamic solutions. So, guys, if you something you know you need, by all means, call immediately. Space is very limited, uh, and so we have to be creative about creating space and time for schools. So we have to do a lot of weekends, we have to do a lot of early morning, and we have to do a lot of evening to accommodate folks in different areas. So whenever you see an email that says where we're going to be, 
by all means, take advantage of that. But guys, make sure that you get your staff help. Don't go into another school year hoping or hoping that it works out. They have to have personal human knowledge on how to deal with personal human problems. That's what Don't Kick Them Out is. Very excited. Dr. Jackson here. I'm very, very uh, just pumped up about what we're doing. And I'm so excited about the change that we're seeing in schools and seeing in individuals' lives. The messages I get for the reports from the principal, reports from the superintendent, watching school cultures change is something that I'm extremely proud of and excited about. And I'm looking forward to working with you and helping you to have those changes as well. Dr. Jackson here. I'll see you next time.